So when you eat a food and it's broken down into glucose, gets into the bloodstream, how well do you regulate that? Now, the issue with processed foods is that when we strip out all the nutrients and all the fiber and everything else, we usually make them a high sugar food. The biggest issue that we have in this country today is that we eat too much sugar. And when I talk sugar, I don't just mean white table sugar. I mean rice and potatoes and, and all those kind of starches that we're eating on a daily basis. And we're told we should eat because we should eat a lot of grains, right? So with that comes a high sugar load on the system. And when you have a high sugar load on the system, um, a lot of things can happen. So this is blood sugar over time, right? And so what happens if right now I'm hungry, so let's say my blood sugar drops a little bit, and I eat some food, and it goes up and down and up and down, right? In a perfect world, my blood sugar stays fairly equal, OK? Your body is really, really concerned in keeping that blood sugar as controlled as possible. It doesn't like big variations and big jumps. So your body likes it if we just got a really kind of like controlled little area of blood sugar spikes and drops and valleys and all that. Now, anybody in here have a habit of skipping breakfast? Be honest. All right, thank you. See, what's happening with you is that your blood sugar is tanking, right? Because you, ha you haven't been eating any food. If you're down here, you ain't functioning. You, it, you ain't. You're shutting down. That's it. You're going out, OK? Lights are out. So your body has to have a mechanism to bring this back up into the range because your brain needs sugar, you need to function, right? Cellular metabolism, you need to, you're constantly burning to keep that apparatus going. So there's a mechanism to bring this back up. And this is done through your adrenal glands. And your adrenal glands are these hazelnut sized glands on top of your kidney. They're your stress handling glands, all right? So they produce adrenaline and cortisol and things like that. So what they do is if the tiger jumps out of the bush and you decide if you're gonna fight or flee, they start producing the adrenaline, so you're like, okay, ready to do whatever I need to do. When the tiger goes away, they relax, and so do you. But what they also do is they release the cortisol, okay, and they do something called gluconeogenesis, which means they take glucose stored in the liver and glucagon stored in the muscles, and they release it back into the bloodstream to basically bring your blood sugar back up. So that's how the mechanism works. When we, 100,000 years ago, were hunting the antelope and we weren't successful, that's kick, what kicked in, right? Because we can't just stop working if we don't get food. But if you do this, let's say, and I have a feeling you might do this more often than just yesterday. So you're eating a diet now where you're constantly crashing, constantly going down, constantly going down. So what you're doing is you're putting huge, huge, huge stress on your adrenal glands. Is that where I can check my blood sugar? This week? Well, your blood sugar has nothing to do with it because your blood sugar probably will be somewhat within a range. But the mechanism that's doing it, it ain't food, which it should be. It's your adrenal glands trying everything possible to keep that blood sugar so that you can function. So on a, from an endocrine perspective, from a hormonal perspective, you're screwed long term. <laughs> Excuse my French, OK? Because this is your buffer in real life. Your adrenal glands are your buffer to deal with stress. OK, the athlete that get, never gets injured has strong adrenal glands. The athlete that gets injured all the time, no adrenal glands. Your ability to handle toxins, your ability to handle any kind of stress, any kind of insults on the system, are your adrenal glands, OK? But the important part with the adrenal glands is that if the adrenal glands fail or start getting compromised, all your hormones work on a teeter-totter. Before you know the thyroid's kicking in, you got your reproductive, and then you got your hypothalamus pituitary, the orchestrator of all this, because all these work on feedback loops. And when that starts getting dysregulated, people get sick. I'm not saying you're sick. But what I'm saying is this is the mechanism that happens. So one of the things that we want to make sure in our diet is that we don't skip meals. Because it's not only putting a big stress on just your, your energy metabolism, but it's putting a huge stress on your endocrine system. But let's just say you went to Krispy Kreme, OK? Let's just make it really bad. I mean, come on now. I got to pull your string a little bit, right? So we went to Krispy Kreme, or we just had we had a food that has a lot of sugar or carbohydrate content. Uh -huh. This could actually also happen with a salad with people who have really deregulated blood sugar. And now, instead of going and leveling out, your blood sugar just shoots up to a really high level. Well, your body doesn't like that either, OK? Because we have another player in this whole thing, which is your pancreas, OK? And the beta cells in the pancreas release a hormone called insulin. Insulin 
it's a little bit like a chauffeur because it likes to take the glucose molecule, okay, and it brings it over here to your cells. And your cells have all these little insulin receptor sites around them, okay? And it brings the glucose molecule into the cell and it makes a happy cell and a happy you because it produces energy. So this happens trillions and trillions of times every second right now. Okay, this is how we, how we live. But see, when your blood sugar shoots up this high, the pancreas goes, whoa, that's a lot of blood sugar. Let's bring that down. That's not good. So it says, okay, here we go. Produce, 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 produce more insulin, right? But the body tends to then overreact sometimes, and instead of leveling you back out, bam, you're back down here. Anybody in here ever had like lunch and about an hour or two later they were just like ready to take a nap? Right? We've all been there, right? Just like out, drooling over the keyboard, whatever it is, right? This is an insulin spike. This is what's going on. Okay? Because the body, you had too much sugar, shot up, too much insulin, crashed back down. Now I tell you one thing, most people that I see, their diet usually consists of this for days, for weeks, for years, and for decades. Spiraling up and spiraling down, spiraling up and spiraling down. This will completely dysregulate your entire system and hormonal system. See, the other thing is now this, your cells are starting to go because when you're doing this, the body produces insulin now all the time because you're constantly having those high blood sugar fluctuations and then your cells say, okay, hold on now, that's a lot of insulin in the system. I got to slow this whole process down. So it says, okay, well, I'm just going to downregulate these insulin receptor sites and just take on a couple. And then, the, and then there's more sugar in the, blood, in the bloodstream and your pancreas goes, well, I better produce more insulin because we can't get it into the cells. And the cells start downregulating these insulin receptor sites more and more. This is insulin resistance. And when you have insulin resistance, the blood sugar is not getting into the cells, so you start fatiguing. And then you start craving sugar because you want more energy, right? And you feed this whole mechanism more and more and more. And before you know, the beta cells in the pancreas shut down and you have diabetes type 2. So this is the mechanism. Simple biochemistry. I hope I kept it simple. But this happens with so many people every day. You know, and, and insulin shots and, and metformin and all the medication out there ain't the solution. The solution is to start changing your diet. And the solution is to balance your blood sugar. Because if you start bringing this back into balance, everything will change. See, when you have high, high elevated insulin levels, your blood pressure increases. You have massive inflammation throughout the system in your arterial walls, systemic inflammation everywhere, brain fog, depression, anxiety. And the other thing is, as long as you have insulin cursing in the bloodstream, your body will never, ever, ever burn fat. You will never lose weight. Not happening. Biochemically impossible. If you've got insulin in the system, the body will use sugar for fuel. It will never pull fat out of the storages and start burning it. Because insulin's goal is to bring the sugar into the cells, but when that's full, it's going to take the, the sugar and put it into the storage. It's dumping and dumping and you're going to get bigger and bigger. Right? And so now we're calorie counting and we're going to Weight Watchers and we're working out hard. But maybe we're still eating too much sugar and we're just not losing weight. So balancing your blood sugar is essential to be bringing your, back, your health back into line. Bringing the blood pressure down, bringing the inflammation down, losing the weight, getting more mental clarity, right? We have this idea that we have to eat sugar or have to have starches with every meal. That's what we're taught for the last 40 years. We look at the food pyramid. What's on the bottom? It's grains. But it ain't working. That's not how we're designed to be. We're designed to live on a more of a ketogenic diet, meaning low sugars and actually a little bit higher fat with a lot of vegetables and then some protein. That's what we're really designed to do. So if you really want to take your body to the next level, if you want to lose that weight, if you want to increase your mental clarity, if you want to bring your blood pressure down, if you want to get rid of the aches and pains, whatever that's ailing you, right? If, you want, if you're tired of being, having a hard time getting up in the morning, see, when your adrenals go off, you know, the adrenals, I mean, and, you know, I don't want to go too much into detail, but just understand that this is about a natural cortisol curve from morning to evening, and cortisol kind of keeps you awake. 
should be high in the morning. You're awake, ready to go. Dips at night, you're ready to go to sleep. If you run this process long enough, and you're, you're too stressed out, the adrenals will fatigue, this will reverse. And you end up with that. Now you have a hard time getting out of bed in the morning. You're hitting the snooze button four or five times. In the afternoon, you have another dip and crash. You're burning. You need some caffeine. You need some sugar to keep going. And then by the time you get home, you're like, second wind. All right, I'm ready to go. What do you mean? I have to go to bed now? That concept. If you simply eat every three hours a small meal, graze, keep that blood sugar level, and choose foods that don't spike your blood sugar, a lot of things will stabilize for you.